the world's richest and most powerful people today on the defense after one of the biggest data leaks ever exposes an offshore money trail worth billions of dollars. Live from CNN's World Headquarters, I'm Linda King Page. CNN Newsroom starts right now. The world of offshore banking is in turmoil as political leaders rush to deny new allegations that they hid money or illegal activity in secret shell companies. More than 11 million leaked documents have been published by the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists. The so-called Panama Papers allege that a law firm in Panama helped more than 100 elected politicians and top officials set up offshore accounts. Simply owning such an entity is perfectly legal, but the documents allege that some of Mozak Fonseca's clients, including cr included criminals and companies blacklisted for ties to terrorism and drug trafficking. The leak itself is massive and incredibly intricate, but Mosek Fonseca says nothing in the papers suggests it has done anything illegal. It says its first priority is to keep serving its clients. Nina Dos Santos explains who some of those clients are believed to be. Their names read like a who's who of the world's elite, heads of state and officials at soccer's governing body FIFA, netted in a massive leak of alleged shell companies in the tropical tax haven of Panama. 11.5 million files on 214,000 companies from the archives of the law firm Mossack Fonseca were obtained by a German newspaper. At 2.6 terabytes of information, the leak made public by the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists is more than 1,500 times larger than WikiLeaks in 2010. Among the documents, the names of 12 current or former leaders, as well as 128 other politicians, including Vladimir Putin, whose associates are said to have funneled $2 billion through banks and offshore firms, allegations his aide describes as, quote, fibs. Argentina's new president, Mauricio Macri, who denies the suggestion that he owned an undeclared stake in a Bahamas-based firm. And Iceland's Prime Minister, Sigmundur Gunnlaugsson, under fire for failing to disclose ties to an offshore company which was run by his wife. When pressed on the matter, he stormed out of this interview with Swedish TV. With so many allegations, some governments say that they will now investigate, with the UK, France, Australia and Mexico looking at tax evasion. I think it's hugely significant. I think it's going to have impact for, for months and, and possibly years to come. Uh, and hopefully it will, it will cause uh, governments, particularly in the United States and the UK, to sort of reassess how they deal with these uh, offshore secrecy zones. Also in the spotlight, FIFA dismissing allegations of links between a member of its independent ethics committee and three men already indicted on corruption charges by U.S. authorities. Setting up an offshore firm is relatively easy and entirely legal. There are some legitimate reasons for doing so, especially in the case of international businesses and families that operate across many different tax jurisdictions. But it's the secret nature of these shell companies that has raised concerns about tax evasion and other criminal activities. Now, in a statement, the law firm Mossack Fonseca, whose documents were posted, said, we have formed more than 240,000 companies, the vast majority for legitimate purposes. Of course, it goes goes on to say there are some that end up being used for illegitimate activities, but that is not our responsibility. With journalists still poring over mountains of data, there may be more revelations to follow. Nina Dos Santos, CNN Money, London. Let's get the view now from Moscow. Matthew Chance joins me live. Matthew, these documents go right to the top of the Kremlin, showing a trail of deals uh, worth about $2 billion linked to very close friends of President Putin. What exactly is the Kremlin saying? Well, first of all, the, the Kremlin is pointing out, quite rightly, that uh, Vladimir Putin himself is not named as one of the, uh, one of the owners of any of these offshore shell companies. Um, his name is not included in any of the documents that have been leaked. We're talking about people who are close to Vladimir Putin. For instance, one of his best friends, a friend he's had since he was a teenager, who is a concert cellist, who it seems is the uh, owner of a company which has hundreds of millions of dollars in assets. Uh, he received a loan 
uh, this individual, of $800 million uh, from a Russian bank. Uh, and there's no record of him repaying even a single cent of that loan. He also bought an asset for $1 and sold it three months later for $133 million. So these are the kinds of dodgy deals uh, that the, uh, the leaked documents, the leaked reports uh, indicate, all pointing towards uh, possible knowledge of the Kremlin. But the Kremlin, of course, insists that this is a lie, that these reports are, although designed to target Vladimir Putin, it, it acknowledges, uh, are simply an attempt to undermine the Russian president um, ahead of the parliamentary elections in this country, uh, which are scheduled for September later on this year, and just a general attempt to discredit Russia. And so the Kremlin line is that, look, this is not evidence of anything as far as the finances of Vladimir Putin are concerned, Linda. And Matthew, um, although President Putin's name is not mentioned, a bank identified uh, by the U.S. as uh, Putin's personal cash box was named. Uh, this, of course, is not the first time uh, the Kremlin, uh, the, the first time that has been accusations at the top level within the Kremlin. How are people responding there to this? Will this at all affect Putin's popularity? Um, well, it's not clear that it will. I mean, certainly you're right in the sense that um, there have been many allegations over the past couple of years, in fact, of uh, um, high-level corruption uh, at the highest level of the Kremlin. I mean, just last week, there was a very high-profile um, report carried out as well, which alleged that various women uh, closely associated with Vladimir Putin had been uh, receiving you know, high-level elite property in Moscow, the Russian capital, uh, for no apparent reason. Uh, and so uh, this is yet another example of the uh, allegations that have been made, uh, not naming Vladimir Putin again specifically, but with apparently Vladimir Putin's fingerprints all over it, metaphorically. Um, and so, yes, I mean, this is not new to the Russian public, but so far... Vladimir Putin's popularity has been unscathed by any of these allegations. His approval rating runs somewhere like 80 percent, 85 percent, according to the latest figures. And so far, we've seen very little indication that these latest allegations uh, are going to have much of a dent in that popularity. OK, Matthew Chance, thanks for staying across it all for us, live from Moscow. Thanks.